Hello everyone, my name is Brian Hernandez. I am the AV Technical Specialist supporting USAID on the KDLT project. The purpose of this video is to give you a quick orientation to the Google Meet virtual platform and accessing its useful tools for meetings and training. Before entering into a Google Meet, you will be prompted to adjust your audio and video settings. To do that, you can either click on the settings option at the bottom of your screen or click on the three dots that appear on the top right corner of your video display. Then click settings. First, you will need to select your microphone source. Please note that the best practice is to not choose the default microphone option as that can cause some internal feedback and internal microphone issues. The best practice for any virtual event platform is to use a headset or a pair of headphones that have a small microphone for optimal audio quality. The same goes for your speaker source. The best practice is to not choose the default option, but rather choose the non-default option and use a headset or headphones to avoid internal feedback within the meeting. Next, you will have to set your video settings. First, select your camera. It can be your built-in laptop camera, or if you have an external web camera that is plugged into your computer. The optimal video resolution for your video settings is 720p. That is the max resolution for most Apple Macs and PCs. But please ensure that you have a strong bandwidth connection that can support that if you are planning to keep your video camera on. Now that we have our audio and video settings routed, let's join the meeting and take a look at Google Meet's main view. Upon joining a Google Meet, you will find two tasks slash toolbars, one at the top and one at the bottom. If we look closely at the bottom taskbar, we see the first tab that gives us the meeting details. Within this tab, you will find the details on how to connect to the meeting that you're currently in. You can copy the joining info. And if you are an outside caller looking to dial in, you could select the more phone numbers option and look for your designated region. There is also an attachments sub tab where you can find any additional attachment that the meeting host has uploaded for the meeting. Please note that only the host and owner of the meeting can upload attachments prior to the start. Next, if we hover over the microphone icon, this gives you the ability to mute and unmute your microphone. To mute and unmute yourself, Simply click on the microphone icon. When it's highlighted red, that means you are muted. When it's not highlighted red, that means your microphone is on and live. Right next to the mute and unmute button, you will find a red telephone icon. This button allows you to leave and exit the meeting. Upon leaving the meeting, you will be prompted to this screen that allows you to rejoin the meeting or return to the Google Meet homepage. Next, you will find a camera icon. By clicking this button, you can turn your video camera on or off. When it's highlighted red, that means your camera is off. When it's not highlighted red, that means your camera is on. To the right of that, we have a raise hand tab, where by clicking on that button, you can let the host and all participants know that you would like to speak without interrupting the current discussion. We also have a turn on captions tab 
that by clicking on that option enables a live transcript or closed captioning of the meeting for your personal view. The Present Now tab allows you to share your screen, a specific window, and or a tab if you're going to be doing a presentation that requires the sharing of visual content. Please note that sharing a tab works best if you're going to use Google Chrome as your primary web browser. Lastly, Google Meet has a More Options tab that allows you to change the layout of how you would like to see the content that is being shared and how you would like to view the meeting attendees and speakers. You can enable full screen mode, change your background image if you have your camera on, Turn on closed captioning, connect your audio through a dial-in number, and adjust your audio and video settings within the meeting. Now that we have gone over the functions of Google Meet's bottom taskbar, let's go over the tabs that are located at the top right corner of Google Meet's main view. The first tab we see is the Show Everyone tab. This allows you to see everyone who has joined your meeting. And this is where the meeting host can add people who aren't connected. Please note, only the meeting host can mute participants, but cannot unmute. Only the participant would need to unmute themselves when they would like to speak. Next, we will find the chat with everyone tab. This allows you to chat with everyone that is connected to your Google Meet. Unfortunately, Google hasn't rolled out the ability to send private messages. Anything that is sent or typed in the chat box will be seen by everyone. So please be mindful on what you post, type and send in the chat box. The last tab we see is the activities tab. Within this tab, you will find three activity tools that are at the disposal of anyone with a Google Enterprise account and if they are the meeting owner slash host. First, we have the breakout rooms option that allows the meeting host to set breakout rooms for a specific breakout session. With this feature, the meeting host is able to set the number of rooms were required for their breakout session. The maximum number of rooms that a meeting host can create is 100. The host can set attendees or send them to a specific breakout room. By clicking and dragging them to a specific room or by typing each attendee name into the specific breakout room of their breakout room assignments. Please stay tuned for a quick live demonstration of setting up this feature. For this demonstration, I am the meeting host and currently I have one participant. And let's say the participant does not have the activities tab open and they are just looking at the presentation. And I announced that we will begin our breakout session and they will be sent to a specific breakout room. The meeting host, as mentioned, will go to their breakout rooms tab, set up the breakout rooms. For the purpose of this demonstration, I'm just going to create two rooms, set a timer for the breakout rooms to end after one minute and send my one attendee to breakout number one. When the meeting host opens the room, you will see that my attendee slash participant will get a notification that will prompt them to join that room. One thing to note is that the attendee can choose to leave the breakout room. When they choose to leave the breakout room, it will prompt them back to the main call. Or if they stay in the breakout room throughout the duration, 
of the breakout room session, when the time expires, they will get another prompt that will prompt them back into the main room. Or if the meeting is behind schedule, the meeting host can choose to close all the rooms now and they'll immediately prompt everyone back into the main room. The second feature available is the ability to create and launch polls. Here the host can type a polling question, enter in the answers, add additional questions if there is more than one poll, save the polls created, and launch them at the appropriate time of the meeting. For example, I already have a poll question created, and when the meeting host has them saved, they can choose to launch them at the appropriate time. A attendee can access the poll question in multiple ways. The first way is if the attendee is not on the activities tab and they are just looking at the main speaker presenting and the host launches the poll, the participant will get a notification at the bottom right corner prompting them and letting them know that a poll question has been launched. By clicking that, they should be able to be routed to the polling question. Another way to access the polling question is by clicking on the activities tab, going to the polls option, and there they can access the polling question. They could select their answer and save their answer and then once the meeting host ends the poll, the host can choose to show everyone the results. The last feature available is the Q&A function. This feature is available to all participants that allows everyone to ask a specific question or questions and it also allows other attendees to vote up those questions for the speaker to answer during a Q&A session. Here you have the ability to mark the question as hidden, mark it as answered, and delete questions. The host can open and close the Q&A by clicking on the Allowing Questions tab. Now let's take a look at Google's Jamboard feature. To quickly access a Jamboard, first, in your web browser, go to workspace.google.com slash dashboard. That's where you will access the dashboard to your Google G Suite account. Within your apps, there you could quickly reference your Google Jamboard. But before we jump into a demonstration on how Jamboard works, let's take a look at how you can access a Jamboard from a participant view within Google Meet. There are two ways that you can access a Jamboard within Google Meet. The first option is to toggle over to the Meeting Details tab that is located in the bottom left corner of your Google Meet home screen. There, as mentioned prior, you can access the meeting details, but we're going to pay close attention to the attachments tab. And there, as you see, I, as a meeting host, have already created a Jamboard. And when you toggle to the attachments tab, you could go ahead and click on that attachment and that can take you to a Jamboard. Another option that is typically done within Google Meet is whoever the meeting host is or the tech support is of the meeting, they typically copy and paste the Jamboard link into the Google Meet chat box. And there you will receive a notification as a participant that a link has been shared and you could just simply click and enter into the Jamboard. 
Please stay tuned for a live demonstration on how Jamboard works, featuring one of our KDLT facilitators, Andrea on Scott. Jamboard, you can do a variety of things. So this, this uh, tool right here allows you to use a marker to write or draw. So you can do uh, shapes or you can draw something or you can write. Um, as you can see, it's not the best writing, but you can still do it. This is the eraser tool. So if you don't like what you did, you can definitely erase it. And then this is the pointer tool. So that allows you to the select tool. So it allows you to select between the options. This is the sticky note tool, right? So you can write anything. And then you hit save. And then it allows you to uh, drag that. You can put it anywhere. You can stack it on top of another one. You can move it around the screen. This is great for when you want to categorize things. You can size it. You can also, when you do a sticky note, you can change the color. So maybe you want a blue sticky note. And so you can do that. And again, you can drag it around. You can resize it um, as much as you want. The other thing is you can add a picture. So say you want to search the web for the word um, appetizers, right? So you will get some options. You select one, you insert it, and now you have appetizers on your board. You can also do shapes. So if you click on this, this here, you see a variety of shapes. I've already put some there it'll allow you to add shapes so you can use this to um, build something if you'd like and then text if you click on this one and click into the document you can write a text um, and you can also change the color so you see that the text uh, has different colors when you click on it when you click on the text you can uh, change the colors as well Oh, this is the way that you change the colors. Up here, you can change the color of the text by putting a different color there. So, I learned how to set all text. There you go. So you can um, change the color of your text. Lastly, I would like to go over how you could set up a split screen within Google Meet or any virtual platform. It's quite simple. All that you simply have to do is within your internet web browser, as you have multiple tabs open, you can just click and drag your Google Meet tab away from your web browser, and it will isolate that as a separate view. Please ensure that you minimize the screen and you could resize it to your liking for your personal view. And in the same way, you can click drag out your activities tab. For instance, if you're in a Google Meet and you're viewing a Jamboard and you still want to interact and, and engage with the attendees on the Google Meet, but still have access and easily toggle over and view your Jamboard or your activity link. That way you can have two separate tabs open, minimized and resized to your liking so you can both interact and engage and also participate in the activity. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial video of the excitements of the Google Meet virtual platform. I hope that this tutorial was very insightful and that you can enjoy these amazing tools within Google Meet that are at your disposal. Once again, my name is Brian Hernandez and I look forward to working with each and every one of you.